now that we've added authentication, we take users that sign in to our authenticated page. However, instead of just displaying this logout button, we want to display a number of pages, the user's timeline, their profile, their search page, etc. So to enable users to toggle between pages, we're going to add a bottom navigation bar to the bottom of the home page, and it's going to be available in all of our pages. So to add that, we're going to build out our build auth screen function. And instead of returning a, a raised button, we're going to return a scaffold. So we can comment out our logout button for now. We'll return a scaffold widget. And to be able to display different pages, we're going to set as the body of this scaffold a special widget called a page view. And for this page view, it'll have as its children a list of widgets, which are going to consist of all the pages that we mentioned. The first one will be the timeline, and I'm just going to auto import all of these by hitting the tab button. We'll first have the timeline page, then the user's activity feed, then the upload page, then the search page, and after that, the user's profile. So we want the pages to be displayed in this order, and we want a corresponding button, for example, for the timeline page, for the upload page, etc. The first thing that we're going to do for the page view is we're going to add a controller to enable us to switch between the pages. That's going to be set to a page controller variable that we're going to create in state. So we'll make this page controller variable that will be of type page controller. So within init state, we want to initialize a special widget called a page controller. And we're going to assign it to the variable that we created. And the reason for this, the reason we want a reference to our created page controller is that since we're creating it, when our state is created in the init state method, we want to dispose it. We want to dispose it in the dispose method when we're not on the home page, when we don't need the controller. So we'll create the dispose method and just call page controller dot dispose to get rid of it. This is a common pattern for widgets that we have to initialize with init state. So now that we have our page controller, we're going to also add a function called on page changed. And what this will do is it's going to first take the index that we're on. So for example, if we're on the zeroth index of this children list, then we're going to be displaying the timeline page. If we're on the first index, we're going to be on the activity feed page, etc. So we're going to pass this value to on page changed, and we want to put that index value in state in order to pass it to some other widgets, namely our bottom navigation bar. So in its parameters, we'll get the integer page index, and we'll use set state to update a new state value that we'll create of the name of the same name page index. And note that since the value that we're attempting to put in state has the same name as the state variable that we're trying to update, we need to instead update this dot page index instead of just page index. So let's create page index in state. This will be an integer initialized to zero. We could set a different initial index within our page controller by setting initial page to something else other than zero. By default, it'll be zero, but we could set it to, say, two to display the upload page. And now, since we have these two values, we're going to add another argument to our page view called physics. And we don't want our page view to be scrollable. We want the pages to sometimes have scrollable widgets within them. However, we don't want the page view itself to scroll. So we'll set widgets, we'll set physics to never scrollable scroll physics, this particular widget to make sure we cannot, or the user cannot scroll. So after body within scaffold, we're going to add 
the bottom navigation bar. And for this, we're going to use a iOS style component. So we're going to use a Cupertino widget called tab bar. And the first value that we're going to provide to the tab bar is the current index. We want to keep the buttons that we're going to put in this tab bar in sync with our children. So if we're on the timeline page, we want to say that our current index is zero. And we're going to get that from the page index integer and state. The next is going to be on tap. So when we tap on one of our buttons, we're going to create them in just a second. When we press on one of them, we want to execute this on tap function. So we're going to add this. And what this will do, this on tap function is going to be responsible for actually changing the page in our page view. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it with our page controller. So first on tap is again going to get in its parameters the page index and we can use the page controller to change the page that we're on with the help of the method jump to page and this method just accepts the integer the page index so that's all that's needed in order to change our page after on tap we want to give the button that we've got selected, say the button corresponding to the timeline page, we want to give it an active color if we're actually on the timeline page. So for active color, I'm going to set mine to my primary color coming from theme.of context primary color, my deep blue, uh, deep purple color. And then finally, we need to include our items, which like children for page view is a list and it's going to be a list of widgets called bottom navigation bar item. And we can supply to this an icon value. So we can provide an icon that users can click on to go to a given page. So for example, for our timeline page, we're going to include the icon with the name icons dot what's hot. And note that you can preview this icon by just hovering over its name. So we see we have this little flame icon here. I'm going to copy this and paste this in four more times for our other four buttons. So for the activity feed page, this will have the icon of notifications active. For the upload page, this will be camera underscore, or actually photo underscore camera. And I want to make this slightly larger since it's going to be in the middle, the middle of our list of buttons. So I'll set the size argument to 35.0. And for the search page that'll have an icon of search associated with it. And then finally for profile, it's going to have an icon of account underscore circle. So with all of that, we can save. I'd also recommend doing a hot restart of your app. And when we take a look at our simulator, we see initially we're on the timeline page. We see our first navigation bar button has the active color that we applied. And we see up at the top, text timeline. It may not be easily visible, but we're displaying the correct page. Then if we go to the activity feed page, if we click on that button, we see the activity feed page text and the same for the rest of the widgets. So now we have navigation within our app. We're using the majority of our pages. And at this point, we've established our basic app structure and we're ready to move on to making each of these pages functional.